socialize the God of the Lord God, be gracious unto us. O God, be gracious unto us. The God's last name is among the Lord's. The great doors of the Lord's world found the thing that I gave to say all the Lord's glory. O blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of the angels. Having glory to you, Christ our God, and our whole glory to you. O heavenly King, the comfort of the Spirit of truth, who are present everywhere in those all things, the treasure of blessings and the giver of life, come to our in us and cleanse us from every sin and save our souls, so gracious one. Amen, holy God, holy mind, and holy heart, and have mercy on us. I use the veil of silence, the veil of silence, the consolation you must. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, and have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us, Lord, be gracious to our sins. O Master, forgive our transgressions. Holy One, consider our weaknesses and visions, and heal us for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and we are slain in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of angels. Amen. O Lord, Savior, people, and bless your inheritance, granting victory to the faithful of our adversaries, and protecting your commonwealth by your cross. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lifted up on the cross by your free will, Christ God. Grant mercies to your new commonwealth and bear your name. Glad our faithful rulers by your power, giving the victory over their adversaries. May your alliance be for them a weapon of peace. An invisible standard, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Awesome and unfailing protection, do not spurn our supplications, gracious, and all praise the Lord. Uphold the Orthodox Commonwealth, preserve those who have called to govern, and grant them victory from on high. For you, the only one, gave birth to God. To God. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy. We pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for all Orthodox, pious, and all Orthodox Christian, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Archbishop and Father Solomon, and all our brotherhood in Christ. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you are a merciful and loving God, and to you we give glory. The Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of angels. Amen. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. Glory to the holy consubstantial life be, and undivided should be always, now and forever, and unto the ages of angels. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and honor is peace and will to men. Lord, Son, and Jesus, they all can be easy being in the prophecy of Lokia. Glory to God in the highest, and honor is peace to both men. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. O Lord, why do so many taught me? Many are those who rise up against me. Many you say to me, there is no salvation for him and his God. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I cried out to the Lord in a loud voice, and from his holy mountain you heard me. As for me, I lay down and slept, and I awoke, for the Lord will be my help. I will not fear ten thousand people arrayed against me all around. Arise, O Lord, and save me, my God, for you have stricken all the enemy without cause. You have shattered the sinner's teeth. This deliverance is the Lord's. Upon your people be your blessing. As for me, I lay down and slept, and I awoke, for the Lord will be my help. O Lord, in your anger, rebuke me not, chastise me not in your wrath. Your arrows have burned into me, and your hand weighs heavily upon me. Because of your wrath, there is no soundness in my flesh. There is no peace in my bones because of my sins. For my iniquities have overwhelmed me, and they weigh upon me like a heavy load. My sores have become stench and festering because of my folly. A stooping and exhausted wreck, I stumble morning all the day. My loins are burning with fever, for my life is a total mockery, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I was crushed and deeply afflicted. I roar at the groaning of my heart. O Lord, all my longing is known to you, and my groaning is no secret to you. My heart races, my strength has left me, and even the light of my eyes has failed me. My friends and companions approached and stood by, and my closest kinsmen kept their distance. And those who sought my life were egged on, while those who wished me ill 
Angels spoke lies, I deception all the day. But I remained as a deaf man and heard them not, as a dumb man and opened not my mouth. As a man who has not heard a thing, and thus is no retort of my lips. In you, O Lord, I have placed my trust. You will give heed, O Lord, my God. I said, O that my foes cease to gloat over me, who blessed are mightily when my feet stumbled. As for me, I am ready to be scourged, and my pain is with me always. Indeed, I myself confess my guilt, and I will live in anguish because of my sin. Those who render me evil for good oppose me when I sought the justice. But my enemies survive and overpower me, and those who hate me without cause will multiply. O Lord God, forsake me not, stay not far from me, hasten to help me, O Lord, of my salvation. In you, O Lord, I have placed my trust. You will give heed, Lord, my God. Hasten to help me, O Lord, of my salvation. O God, my God, I do to rise to you. My soul is thirsty for you, and all of my flesh is hungry for you. Like a dust in the trackless land that has no water, so did I come before you in your holy place, to see your power and your glory. Since your love is better than life itself, my lips shall declare your praise. So shall I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands and call upon your name. My soul shall be filled as with choice of and joyful lips will praise your name. As I lay in my couch, I remembered you. I meditated on you throughout the early watches, that you became for me the healthy one, that in the shelter of your wings I will find delight. My soul clings to you, and your right hand holds me up. But as for those who sought my life in vain, may they sink into the depths of the earth, and be given over to the sword. The prey of jackals they shall be. But the king shall rejoice in God, and I will swear by him shall glory, and the mouth of liars is stopped. I meditated on you throughout the early watches, that you became for me the helping one, that in the shelter of your wings I will find delight. My soul clings to you, and your right hand upholds me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to your God. Alleluia, 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 los asios deos. Alleluia, 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 glory to your God. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. O Lord, the God of my salvation, day and night I cry out before you. Let my prayer reach out to you, let your ear to my feet, O Lord. For my soul was filled with trouble, my life came close to Hades. I was reckoned with those who go down into the pit. I was like a man beyond help, left for dead. Like the slain left to lie in the grave, those you remember no more, for they are cut away from your hand. You have cast me down to the deepest abyss, into darkness and the shadow of death. Your anger was a burden upon me, you poured your billows over me. You took away my friends from me, you made, you made me loathsome to them. I was closed and you could not escape, my eyes were dim with distress. I cried out to you, O Lord, all the day I stretched out my hands to you. Will you work wonders for the dead? Or can physicians raise them up to sing your praise? Does anyone sing your love in the grave? Are your truthiness in the midst of perdition? Are your marvels ever known in darkness? Are your justice in the land of oblivion? And yet, O Lord, I cried out to you, and to you my prayer shall rise at dawn. Why, O Lord, do you reject my prayer? Why do you hide your face away from me? I am wretched and troubled since my youth. I was raised high and humbled and distressed. Your plague swept over me, your terrors left me shaken. They surround me like waters all the day. They close in upon me from all sides. You have distanced from me, friend and neighbor, my acquaintances, so wretched am I. O Lord, the God of my salvation, day and night I cry out before you. Let my prayer reach up to you, lend ear to my request, O Lord. Bless the Lord of my soul, and the all that is in me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul, and forget not all the gifts from him, who pardons all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who ransoms your life from corruption, and crowns you with his love and mercies, who fills your longings with what is good, and your, and your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord performs deeds of kindness and vindication for all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his will to Israel's children. The Lord is one of compassion and mercy, long suffering and manifold love. His contention is not forever, nor will his anger always last. He has not dealt with us as our sins demand, nor does he repair evil deeds. For as high as the heavens stand over the earth, so far has the Lord extended his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our iniquities from us. As kind as a father is to his children, so is the Lord to those who fear him. For he himself knows well how we are formed. He remembers we are only made of dust. A man, his days resemble grass, as a flower of the field, so shall he bloom. But let a breeze pass over him, and he is gone, and never shall he know his place again. But the Lord's love is from all eternity, and to all eternity for those who fear him. And his justice is upon children of children of those who keep his covenant, and remember his laws to obey them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Over all things his kingship is supreme. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you strong and mighty ones who obey his word, on hearing the sound of his decree. Bless the Lord, all you his powers, as attendants who obey his will. Bless the Lord, all you his works, in every place of his dominion. Bless the Lord of my soul. In every place of his dominion, bless the Lord of my soul. O Lord, hear my prayer, and your truthfulness do feed to my plea, and in your righteousness answer me. And enter not into judgment with your servant, since of all the living none is just in your sight. The enemy has hunted me down, and he has crushed my life into the ground. He has forced me to dwell in darkness, like those who have long been dead. My spirit faints with grief, and within me my heart is in despair. I recall the days of old, I meditated on all your deeds, I pondered the works of your hands. I stretched
stretch out my hand to you, like a parched land, my soul thirsts for you. Make haste to answer me, O Lord, my spirit has failed me. Turn not your face away from me, lest I be like those in the pit. Grant that I may hear your steadfast love at dawn, for I have placed my hope in you. O Lord, teach me the way I should go, for I lifted up my soul to you. O Lord, deliver me from my enemies, it is to you that I have fled, and teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on a straight path, for your name's sake, O Lord, you will keep me alive. In your righteousness, you will deliver me from affliction, and in your loving kindness, you will destroy my enemies. And bring to naught all those who oppress me, for I am your servant. O Lord, hear my prayer, your truth and this to my plea, and your righteousness answer me. May your good spirit lead me on a straight path. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to your God. Alleluia, 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 Deus. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God, our hope, O Lord, glory to you. Oh, 
bad things to the mouth of others, he sent to the disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied, and a cold with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you. Humble and mount on a donkey, and on a cold of fowl of a donkey. The disciples, when he did as Jesus had directed them, they brought the donkey and the cold, and put their garments on them, and he said, They're all. Most of the crowd had spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him shouted, Hosanna in the highest! Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is he? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant, and they said to him, Do you hear what they are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, can you have read? Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, you have brought perfect praise. And leaving them, he went out of the sea. Bethany and Mark, glory to you, Lord, glory to you. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy, and according to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my lawlessness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my lawlessness, and my sin is always before me. Against you only have I sinned and done evil in your sight, that you may be justified in your words and overcome when you are judged. For behold, I was conceived in transgressions, and my in sins my mother bore me. Behold, you love truth. You show me the unknown and secret things of your wisdom. You shall sprinkle me with this, then I will be cleansed. You shall wash me, and I will be made whiter than snow. You shall make me your joy and gladness. My bones that were humbled shall greatly rejoice. Turn your face from my sins and blot out all my transgressions. Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your guiding spirit. I will teach transgressors your ways, and the ungodly shall turn back to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall greatly rejoice in your righteousness. O Lord, you shall open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For if you had desired sacrifice, I would give it. You will not be pleased with overt offerings. A sacrifice to God is a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, in your good pleasure to Zion, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then you will be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer young bulls upon your altar. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today Christ is entering the
the 18th century died in peace. On this day, Palm Sunday, we celebrate the resplendent and glorious feast of the entry of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. Mounting of root, he who waters the mountains, seeks to release humankind from rudeness. In your inevitable compassion, O Christ our God, make us victors over the irrational passions, and make us worthy to see your manifest victory over death, and your joyous life-giving resurrection. And have mercy upon us and save us, Amen. Why did you engage in empty 
effects of general resurrection for the assurance of all. O Christ our God, by your mighty power you resurrected Lazarus, who lay four days dead in Bethany, as the bestower of life, O Savior, you gave life to the blind, and with your disciples you entered the holy city, seated on a donkey's call, as one mounted on the cherubim, fulfilling proclamations that of the prophets made, and the children of the Hebrews went out to meet you, with palm leaves and branches, we therefore likewise wave our olive branches and our palm leaves and gratefully cry to you. O Zana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. 
and the praise of the angels and the heaps of the children you receive as they cry to you, Blessed are you, the one who is coming to call Adam back. The throne Yeah. 
filled with the fragrance of the ointment. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was to betray him, said, Why are, why was this ointment not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? This he said not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and as he had the money bought, he used to take what was put into it. Jesus said, Let her alone, let her keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you shall always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only on account of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priest planned to put Lazarus also to death, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away believing in Jesus. The next day the great crowd who had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him crying. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and set upon it as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's home. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that this had been written of him, and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb, and raised him from the dead for witness. The reason why the crowd went to be in him was that they heard had done this Good morning, my dear friends. Christ is in our midst. He is and always shall be. Good morning on this glorious Palm Sunday morning. We will deal a little bit today with the epistle instead of the gospel. Because I think it has a message for us, especially during these days. It was Saint Seraphim of Saron the wonderful Russian saint who was known for his joyful spirit. He would greet one another throughout the year saying, Christ is risen, my joy. Christos anesti haram. Christos bosmes. He was filled and radiated the joy of Christ. And this is the word that we heard a few minutes ago from the epistle reading. Rejoice in the Lord always. St. Paul is writing to the Philippians. He was writing to them while he himself languished in prison. So the question is how can someone 
be in prison, feel the heaviness of the environment, yet the message that he is sending out is one of joy. What is this joy that we're talking about? That St. Paul is writing. Rejoice always. Rejoice in the Lord always. We live in a crazy time and when we try to understand the joy that the Lord is talking about, it is almost opposite of what we are experiencing in our lives. You know, today people try to be happy and joyful by filling their lives and themselves with all kinds of worldly things. By going to places, traveling the world, they think they can be happy. By filling themselves with all kinds of pleasures of life, they think they can be happy. By loading their homes with all kinds of stuff, they think they can be happy. By eating and gorging themselves, they think they can be happy. By promoting themselves as being the most important person in the world, they think they can be happy. And yet, Christ is talking about something totally different. And I guess we have to stop here and ask ourselves, what do we think is making us happy? What do we think we have to do in our life to be so-called happy? I talk to children, to couples, to elderly people, and some of them are very miserable. And I don't know anything that this world can give them will make them happy. And yet, we are challenged once again. What is happiness? I don't know if some of you probably have encountered people in your lives that exude that peace, that joy, that happiness. And in most cases, these people have very little to boast of. And yet, deep in their heart, in their soul, they were very, very happy. I recall, and I think I shared this with the congregation some time ago, that, you know, the church has pronounced a number of saints this last year or two. And one of them is Saint Ephraim of Gandunaya. Saint Ephraim was a monk of Alanapos. He went as a child, he stayed there as a child throughout his life. He stayed there throughout his life. He was under the obedience of a very difficult elder, very difficult. And what he's characterized as the virtue of obedience. 20 some years ago, I was on Mount Athos, accompanying an elderly bishop. And we were part of this little group that toured a number of places. And one of those places that unbeknownst to me at that time was the little hut, the little skit of this elder and friend of Kandunaya. He was a little older by then. But I recall that we went into his little skit and he took us right away into the chapel. Of course, we had a bishop with us, so that opened the doors. And they sang some hymns and welcomed him. And then we sat outside the little courtyard. And what struck me and remained with me and still does in, in my mind is this childlike elder who was radiated with joy. And he went and sat at the feet of the bishop and said, Your Eminence, I have a question. We were studying the scripture, and I wanted to see if you could explain to this verse. 
And the bishop, also a very loving man, took time to explain. And this elder was just full of joy. He was radiating something very, very deep within me. And I remember leaving, and we were walking on this path, Bonobati. And I was asking this older bishop and said, you know, who is this man? There was something special about him. And he kind of looked at me and said, but don't you know him? This is Father Efrem of Natunaki. Remember him. He's a very special person in the life of the church. And indeed, the church recognized what his man cultivated deep within his heart, deep within his life. And today we have the honor of calling him a saint of the church. Another elderly holy bishop, or both bishops, it's not necessarily just bishops, but in these cases, was the elder Erasmus of Abidu, who was an elderly bishop brought up on campus, he lived like everyone else, very quietly, very few words, but he radiated a peaceful joy. A peaceful joy that I always will always treasure in my mind and in my memory. And again, these people had very little possessions, but as then as they were the center of the universe, radiating joy that was profound. So often at the cross Christians, there's only one authentic joy that we can boast of, that we can work to acquire in our lives. And the source is God Himself, God Almighty. To know Jesus Christ in the depths of our soul, to allow Him to enter into our hearts and to guide our lives and to be filled with His Holy Spirit is the ultimate definition and experience of joy because He is precisely the source of authentic joy. someone abides in God, he or she is connected to all of God, to all of creation. And thus the entire world becomes a blessed place for them. Even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of violence, even in the midst of in the past famines and wars, and all kinds of difficulties. We can still have the peace that passes all understanding. If our constant focus is on the Lord as the King of our lives. You see, when logic tempts us and leads us to despair, to fear, to all these things, that we humans experience in our life. We always worry. And I think Greek moms have a specialty in that. They worry about everything. They call their children, did you eat today? They're adults, they're grown, and yet they worry. There's this sort of motherly thing in them that just will not let go. And that's not always healthy. We think from a human perspective, and we worry about this and about that and so many things of our lives. So in a sense, we have to let the logic aside to be able to make room and trust in God. This is why the saints and saintly people radiated with joy in spite of their hardships in spite of their martyrdoms at times. This is St. Paul that was in prison yet writing in a joyful spirit. The saints discover the secret of the Christian life, that God is always with us. 
and that faith in him chases away all fear, all despair, all hopelessness. When we abide in his love, we discover the security and the comfort to place even in the midst of tragedy or uncertainty. That is, we don't fall in a temptation to despair. And I've said many, many times to you that one of the greatest tools of the evil one is to lead us to despair. And during these days, especially that many of you are home alone, be very careful. And recognize this temptation for what it is. The devil will whisper to us, you are alone. Nobody cares for you. Nobody loves you. That's not true. You are in the presence of God. In the presence of his saints. Call upon him. Call upon them. And let them feel that void. So instead of despair, you know of his presence and you feel the joy. In any and every situation, we will be able to see something positive and good. This coming Holy Week, we are beginning this evening. It begins with triumphal entries and processions. But remember, it won't be long before the Lord is in on the cross by himself. Before he is in the garden wondering, is anybody there with me? Jesus will be betrayed by one of his followers. The others will fall behind. The Lord will be put on trial, condemned, ridiculed, beaten, ultimately crucified. And yet, and that's the punchline. And yet, the story does not end with the cross. The story does not end with our difficulties, with our sufferings. The story does not end with this coronavirus. Although evil seems to prevail, God has the final say. And that's why the church raises yesterday and today this beautiful feast to give us encouragement and to say, don't despair. What you are experiencing today, you will ultimately experience, not only at the end of this coming week, but for eternity, if we take this to heart. If we know the risen Lord and have his spirit abiding in us, then we automatically have his joy shining in our lives. Let me point three things out quickly before we conclude today. First, we need to allow Christ to enter and rule our lives. If anything during these days may have helped us sort of regroup, reprioritize of what is important in life. For too long, we've allowed so many other things to take our Lord's place. And now that we're not in church, we all miss the church, and yet it has been open all these years. Remember what you are feeling today and saying, what I would give to be in church today, the day will come when we will be able to come and go freely once again. And then, the question is, what happened to those thoughts? What happened to those promises? Make the Lord the center of your being now and forever. Number one. Secondly, to be filled with joy, we have to be careful not to allow anxieties and the troubles of life to drown out our faith. To drown out our trust in God. As long as we are in the world, we will 
experience the trials of life. We can't, you know, oftentimes people say, but I'm a good person, I come to church. But you're not in paradise yet. Pull me. We try to live a life of paradise, but we are so quickly reminded we still live in the world. Rejoice in the Lord always. St. Paul counsels us to have no anxiety. Even though he says on the one hand, rejoice in the Lord always. On the other hand, he says, do not have any anxiety about anything. That is, don't allow that to overtake, to ruin your day, your moment, your joy. It's there. Acknowledge it, but don't let it rule over the rest of your life. St. Paul kind of says, with thanksgiving, let us request, let our requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will abide richly in our hearts. In other words, holy joy comes when we learn to place all our concerns and troubles in God's hands. And then to believe that He is in control. The worries don't go away. They're there. But ultimately we trust God. And from that end we have to let go. Place it in His hands. And lastly, not to forget to be thankful. A joyful person always gives thanks. You might say, what can I give thanks about these days? Well, you're still in a safe home. You still have food on the table. You still have people who love you, your children, your spouses, your family and friends. And thank God for our means that we are able to communicate and celebrate even from afar this glorious day. Talk to so many grandparents to say, Thank God for FaceTiming. I'm able to see my grandchildren and talk to them, hear them, see them, and they see me. Yes, the days are difficult, but let's turn it around and find even the smallest blessing. And all of us can. Let's find even the smallest blessing and give thanks to God. Let us celebrate this Palm Sunday when Christ entered Jerusalem, knowing what was to come. And yet, for our sake, He is walking this path, this journey of holy day. Being joyful is a choice. You can choose to be miserable. You can choose to be joyful. It is a choice. That's why we can rejoice always and give thanks in all circumstances if we choose to do that. May the Lord bless us on this journey, my beloved, on this day, to be found worthy to be one of those who accompany the Lord throughout the week to His glorious, to His resurrection, to His crucifixion and glorious resurrection. May we be found worthy to be one of those followers. Follow along with us. On the church website, there is a an area there you can click and find the services. Follow them on, online or print them out. But follow along. Allow your mind to reside on this journey. And together, together we will continue. We will continue to the very end. Blessed is who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice always. St. Paul says, and again I say,
one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried. He rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He yes. ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. Let us stand our eye, let us stand now. Let us be attentive, that we may present a holy
we beseech and pray and entreat you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here presented. And may this bread of precious body of your Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages.
Blessed is 